Hello and welcome, Arsti Shim in the hangar. Today you'll see one of those rare build videos on my channel. SpeedyB, which is a brand of Runcam, sent me this frame for review and I decided to do a full build. The frame is of very high quality and even Bruce from RC Model Reviews was really happy about the quality and, and astounded about the, the box and everything. You get a nice set of parts, screws, velcros and yeah, of course the, the carbon parts for $69. And I think all those TPU printed uh, plastic parts are additional accessories that come in around $30. You can order them separately. The manual is short, mainly it shows you the correct orientation. You also see it on my pics, of course. The design of the frame is pretty simple. You get strong motor arms. Uh, what is a standout feature is the carbon parts have rounded edges and feel of very high, very high quality. You have long screws uh, that screw the motor arms to the bottom plate and those are also there for the stack. The standoffs are really high quality as well. And here you see all the frame parts together are in at around 150 gram. But consider that the cam mount alone is already 25 grams, so you can decide if you use that or leave it away. After getting the frame, uh, I had to order motors, ESCs and the flight control to have all the parts together. Of course, you will find links to all the equipment I used in the description below. Those will not be affiliate links, they are just there for you. Those were the best motors that I could find in the Hobby King European Warehouse 2206-2600kV. There is a nice guide and I will link it permanently under this video from Oscar Liang. He has some great tutorials, some great uh, top lists. What are the best motors, what are the ESC considerations, flight controllers, batteries. He, he really does a nice job of, of collecting useful information on his blogs, so check it out. For ESCs I found Hobbywing 30 amp permanent, should be enough. And there's the KQT F7 board and a few bash, fresh batteries. And once again I bought a tattoo pack. Gen Z is tattoo, but this time it's the R line. Those are a bit more expensive and I really hope that they hold up well. And I'm coming back to using Turnigy Nanotex. Yeah, really looking forward to have this one ready to fly. I started by soldering the ESCs, receiver and VTX while the flight controller was still outside the frame. Then made sure the cable lengths are okay. I soldered the motor wires all at the same and changed the motor direction later in BL Heli Suite. Use the USB port of your flight controller, which has to support BL Heli pass through, and then you can adjust parameters of the BL Heli capable ESCs. Then here is the dry fitting, the crossfire receiver already installed. I liked how the XT60 connector is held in place and the back here with this TPU printed part, but I found that the VTX SMA cable didn't fit into that hole. I installed a Kakute F7 board in there, the AKK X2 Ultimate video transmitter there. I also used the 470 microfarad capacitor that was supplied with. I think with the Kakute to filter it out a bit. Uh, cables are a bit messy and I have a bit of static when I uh, apply throttle but we'll see. In the front I have a black Stealthy Fox here Predator Micro. I love the, the branding of the antenna back there. It's Air C Shim. Uh, Bruce tested this against the lollipop and got 750 meters of range with good quality. So seems like a proper antenna. Full antenna test will either follow on my channel or Bruce will do it. So really eager to fly this little thing. It's not too heavy. It's 
around 350 gram and I'm a bit hesitant to use this TPU mount. I love the idea to save weight by using the Runcam 5 so I don't want to add it back with this bulky TPU mount. It would be a good protection and nice installation. You can even just screw it down nicely. For the first flights I will go with my cheap foam solution and a rubber or a velcro. And this is like 2 grams with the velcro. Okay, that was a lot of talking. Hope to show you this thing flying in the next scene. Pretty much left everything on stock. The pits, the stock settings for Beta Flight 350. Just played around with the OSD to be honest. And I'm happy that my crossfire displays the link quality or RSSI on channel 8 and also shows it on the OSD. I have my front props turning to each other and the back ones turning outwards, that's the default. Everything looks good. Yes, it worked. <laughs> uh, next thing will be an FPV flight test. Okay, here you see my first FPV flight from Hyde Terrace. The video looks a bit worse than it actually was and the white static jumps are just on a DVR. And the cam, the cam image quality is not perfect. So this version of the Predator Micro was really not the best. They made a better one later. But I used it in some other quad. The voltage is correct, but the milliamp or the, the amperage draw is not correct. It's only half of what I used. So those 4 amps here are really 8 amps, something like this. So you will see later on that or how I calibrated the amp meter to have correct draw. Yeah, and here you see how bad the first micro predator works against the sun. Here it's kinda okay, but it also blows out the image. On the OSD I really like to have the voltage very prominent and also like to have the cross in the middle. It's good for aiming. Top right uh, you see the RSSI which is really mapped to my link quality. So I'm not 100% sure about this but it gives me some confidence. After the first flights I knew I want to change the AKKX to ultimate here and just in time I got the FXT Ares VTX in this stack mountable format. Aluminum cooling things here. It comes with MMCX connector to SMA, not RPSMA, that's important. It's got some clearance. Don't get them cables touching the soft mounted gyro board uh, from the Kakuti and it would be nice if the, the button for setting up the VTX would be on the side rather than on the back. Uh, the back is not accessible that good. Kind of like the LED that show you channel and band. Blue is for band, red is for channel. And if you press it for 3 seconds, you see the power output 25, 200, 600 or 1 watt. And of course they also support smart audio and cam control. With smart audio I would have needed to solder an additional cable on the board down, which I don't like. Then I could set the VTX settings with the Betaflight menu. 
and I swapped cams to the Micro Eagle. This is not a totally fair comparison because I swapped camera and VTX, but yeah, you see less less noise, less static on the right side and the new on the RS. VTX and also the image is way better on the micro eagle of course, but we knew this. Other than that, the quad flies really fine now. Makes me confident to fly it more acro and yeah, just have fun with it. And also enables me to reset my mojo to fly even smoother because this now is my acro machine. So now, for my, for my standards, this thing has all the bells and whistles. Those are the bells here. <laughs> yeah, one thing I have to do is I have to correct the scale of the amp draw because it's too low. Oscar Lien has a good article about this as well. Uh, basically, you fly, note the milliamp usage it lists at the end screen, at the debriefing and compare it with what you charge with your charger and then you divide it. In my case the OSD shows only 54% of what the charger charged in so I need to decrease the scale by multiplying it with 0 0.54. Okay so I'll leave you with a few more minutes of FPV footage, of DVR footage. I promise you next video will show HD footage most likely from the Runcam 5, as well, I just like using it currently, even if it's not the best at dynamic range, but yeah, it's light. I just had so much fun flying around, and since it's such a lightweight copter, you get flight times of 4 to 7 minutes on a 4 cell with 1500 milliamps. Um, and I also, I didn't use the full power of this VTX yet, so I think it's quite strong, but on the other hand, Rapid Fire is really good at delivering good FPV feeds, so take it for that. If you want to do this build, check out my info box and find all the parts I used. But of course, you can choose your own electronics. I just went with what was fast available. Don't buy the cheapest motors or SCs, they will kind of ruin your experience if they fail mid, mid air. And also get good batteries as they add a lot to a good flight experience. Thanks a lot for watching. See you next time. Bye.